In this sports Photoshop tutorial, we're gonna take these photos of Steph Curry and turn them into this all-star poster design for the Golden State Warriors. All right, so we're gonna be working in camera raw filter. And the first thing I did was increase my texture and clarity. So I always make these adjustments to the whites and blacks as well as highlights, but I'm not really sure if you guys understand the specific values that I get. So usually what I do is I increase and decrease the sliders to the max and minimum amounts to see how it affects the image. And then I'll lower it to get my desired liking. All right, step two is highlights and shadows. So we're gonna add a levels adjustment and we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. This makes your entire subject's color a little bit darker. And once you have that, you're gonna decrease your opacity and select your layer mask. And you're just gonna hit Command I to invert the mask. Next, you can take a soft brush and make sure you have your layer mask selected and you have the white color toggled. And you gotta remember that white reveals and then black conceals when you're doing this. So in this case, we wanna reveal that darker shade that we just created with those levels adjustments. So we are painting back on with a white brush. This process takes a little bit, so I sped it up for the purpose of this video. All right, so you're gonna do the same levels adjustment process, but with a blend mode of screen instead of a multiply blend mode. So you'll find the brighter parts of your image and then paint over them with that same white brush to reveal that bright layer. If you guys are enjoying today's video, please hit that like button for me helps the channel out and it also lets me know that I should continue doing videos like this. All right, next is a really underrated part of graphic design and it's making small color adjustments to your photo. So oftentimes you may have discoloration or lighting that may cause your subject to have an off colored skin tone, like the example that you see on your screen right now. So what you can do is apply a selective color to even out those skin tones. I'm gonna show you guys very quickly how that was done. So we have our subject here and you can go down to selective color and you're gonna have all these different colors to work with. Now, don't get too scared. We're really just gonna be working in the neutrals color tab. So you see, I made some slight adjustments to the sliders within the selective color. And then I inverted the mask by hitting command I and then I painted back on those spots that I wanted the color adjustment with. All right, so this is another really useful tip for sports designers out here. So the Warriors logo didn't match the colors that I wanted. So interestingly enough, you can actually change the colors in any sports logo. And this is how you do it. So you take the magic wand tool and you click on the area that you wanna change the color of. In this case, I'm taking the bridges background that had a different shade of yellow that I wanted. And so you can go up to edit and then fill and then fill it with whatever color that you wanna choose. I did this for every strip of yellow so I sped this up so you guys didn't have to watch me do all that. I also changed the colors of the white strips to red because there's a little bit of red on the jerseys and I wanted to color match it. All right, now we have the motion design effect, which is one of the best parts of the whole video. The first thing I did was put a honeycomb element in the background and then I added a radial blur to that and this creates a dispersion effect that you can use within your graphics. I then duplicated the layer three times and I did it with every single color, so blue, red, and yellow, and I made it look like the colors were coming off of my player. I then added a couple other things here. So I added the all-star voting logo, as well as the points per game text. I also added the falling stars in the background, which I'm gonna show you guys how it was done. And I wanna show you how they are made to look like they're falling. So you're gonna click on your star and then go up to filter blur and then we're gonna hit motion blur this time. Once you're in there, you can adjust the distance and the angle of your blur to better suit whatever graphic you're making. All right, next up we have some lighting tips. So for this graphic, I took a black soft brush and went all the way around the outside of my graphic and then I decreased the opacity to have less of an effect on the entire thing. All right, let's learn how to do some player shadows here. So first make a black dot with your hardness set to 100. And then next you can hit control click on that dot. And we're gonna change the perspective on it by dragging the middle point over to the right or left, whatever you would like. And now you can add a Gaussian blur by going to filter and blur and then go to Gaussian blur. And then if you adjust the slider to the right, you get more of a blur. And if you adjust the slider to the left, you get less. So adjust the slider however you would like and whatever looks best. I usually keep mine around eight to 12 and then I'll decrease the opacity on the actual image. 
All right, the last part is color corrections. The first thing I did was add the color lookup Kodak 2395. I then added a film stock and I reduced the opacity. I rarely use channel mixers, but it can be sometimes really cool. So if I do use channel mixers, I'll put it on luminosity to see what type of effect it gives me. Then I'll move forward from there. Uh, the next thing I did, I inverted a black and white gradient map and I set the blend mode to soft light. And then I decreased the opacity on that because the effect was a little bit too strong. What this did was really affect the brightness of the blues within the graphic. And then you can see the before and then the after right here. All right, now we have vibrance. So what vibrance does is it's increasing the saturation of your graphic without affecting skin tones. So you don't even have to worry about oversaturating of any of the yellows or reds within the skin of your players. This is how my graphic looks before color corrections. And then this is the after. All right, now we have the final result right here. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please check out some of my other Photoshop tutorials by clicking right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one.